Hi, I'm Guy Lawrence and you are listening to the Guy Lawrence podcast. If you're enjoying this content and you want to find out more and join me and come further down the rabbit hole, make sure you head back to guylawrence.com.au. Awesome guys, enjoy the show. Georgia, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, guys. Such an honor to be here. I've been listening to your podcast over the years and um, I love your guests. And it's so it's such an honor to be one of your guests now. Well, thank you very much. And I have to say, I don't know if you know this actually, but this is the third time you're appearing on my podcast because of, <laughs> no, I thought I might get that look because of the radio interviews we did in oh. Melbourne and repurposing them over the last 12 months as well. So uh, it's finally good for me to be interviewing you and asking yeah. you all the questions. I know, and it's really interesting because I have my own podcast and uh, being on the other end, being interviewed, it's, um, it's, a, it's a really different beast and a good beast. In- <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> totally. Get ready for all the difficult questions, mate. That's all right. Why. Beautiful. <laughs> I'm going to get what I've been serving up for people right yeah. back at me. <laughs> but I, I always ask everyone, if you were on an airplane and a stranger sat next to you and asked you what you did for a living, what would you say? Um. I would, um, I started with an arm, isn't that funny? I would say I, it's really funny because this has changed over the years. If you'd asked me 12 months ago, I would have said I, um, my role and what I love to do is wake people up to their potential. But it's sort of shifted over the last 12 months because I've noticed that a lot of people don't have much living in their life. And so my, what I do is help people get more living in their life because they get so caught up in societal expectations, what mum says we should do, what dad, what my partner, what my children, what my boss, what the media says I should be, do and have. We get caught up in that, that we forget to actually be human. And so what I love doing now is helping people to understand why they're conforming and how they can start self-authoring. And what do you think that conforming brings to someone if they don't even realize they're doing it? Uh, it, it, Oh, okay. It brings a lot of things. It brings physical unrest, mental, um, mental disturbances and emotional sort of blockages as well. It really, I think if you're not living in a sense of your true self and listening to yourself, it appears in all areas of your life, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Yeah. Absolutely. So mm-hmm. it'll be playing out in people's lives with boredom. Um, it could be finding themselves always self-sabotaging and ending mm-hmm. up in relationships and situations that don't serve them. Um, it just leads us down a path where there's, it's lacking joy. Yes. Wow. I've, I've, I was going to ask you something completely different, but I'm going to stay on this path <laughs> for a second because I think I, most people, we, we're actually craving something far deeper and we don't even know what it is, how to look for it. Where do we go with mm. that? Yeah. When people come to you, are they normally in then pain? Is it that disconnect, like you said, about the, the, the living, the true self? I, yeah, okay. I think most of them are starting to, or majority of them are scratching the surface they're already curious and they're realizing that there's something more they're tired they're they're tired of living somebody else's life I think and they don't they don't come to me with those words but I can see that's what's Mm -hmm. happening Uh, so you have the the executive or the the manager or the small business owner who's just go 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 all the time and yet they've got no optimal experiences in their life they've got nothing that brings them a real sense of real joy so there's, there's those people. And on the odd occasion, I'll have people who are at that, at that really dysfunctional level. And I probably would not work with them too closely to start with. I'd start giving them, encouraging them to be more curious and, start, and encouraging them to start taking a little bit of ownership and then broadening their horizons. Um, I know personally for myself, the, the greatest thing I ever did was become curious. And that helped me move out of all this conditioning that I had that had led me to a life where I was just not happy. Nothing was going right for me. This is a long time ago. And it was that one thing of being curious and being open-minded that allowed me to start self-authoring. Yeah. A beginner's mind, I always, I always like to say. Yeah. 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 
So what, was there a, um, a tipping point for you then with all this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was. <laughs> <laughs> there was a massive tipping point. And for, for me, I was 29. I was 29 mm. years old and I was, um, I'd been married for about five or six years, I think, at the time. So I married quite young. I had been struggling to have children with my husband. And um, we, we also were running a business together. Well, it was his business, but I was working in the business. I'd left my career to help him in his business And I can remember it was in May 2001, I think it was. Might have even been May 17th. I think that was the date. So when we have these emotional impacts, we know the dates, right? Um, And he came home to me and he said, I think we should separate. And I went, okay. I thought that maybe it was just the stress of our business because we'd won a really large contract and we had to change our business and start employing all these people. But unbeknownst to me, he'd been having an affair for uh, only a few months, but it was really interesting because he he had reignited the flame from one of his childhood sweethearts and they'd been secretly meeting and contacting each other over the years. And I had no idea about that. But that, that in itself was the catalyst for me from moving from a victim of my life to mastering my life. Now that took a long time. There was really 12 to 18 months of me doing all these things, trying to save a marriage that had no hope and saving it. So I didn't let go for a very long time. But also at the same time, I was, I had just turned 30. I had been on IVF trying to have kids for a number of years and that hadn't worked. And all of a sudden I found myself thinking, who's going to want me? I'm broken. I can't have kids. I'm, I'm old now. I'm now 30. <laughs> And nobody's going to want me anymore, right? This is what I thought. I was broken. I was a has-been. And my, my husband obviously didn't want me anymore. So, you know, started thinking of all these things of this low self-worth started to trickle into my life. And I was really, I could, I could go back to my journal now and start reading through all the things that I'd written at that time. And I know there were times that I just didn't want to be on the earth anymore. I'd had enough. Wow. Uh, it was really just, you know was not the best and I was very depressed for quite some time and for me quite some time is a number of months so it was just it was not the best thing luckily for me my older sister uh, at the time was in a multi-level marketing uh, business and there's something really good about multi-level marketing companies they do a lot of personal development and um, I wasn't in the company or anything like that but at 30 years of age I had not read a book since school. I had done no formal education. I'd done a little bit of business training, you know, working out how to do tax and um, business accounting, but I had done no for, I'd left year 12, gone straight into the workforce and done no other formal training or no other personal development. So my sister had said, Hey, there's this seminar on. And at the time I really didn't have a lot of money because we're going through a marriage breakup, the business was in transition and all these things were happening. So I thought, okay, and I I think I invested a couple hundred dollars. To me, that was a huge amount of money to be investing in myself. And mind you, that was a long time ago. We're talking almost 20 years ago now. And um, so I went along to this three-day seminar and it was uh, a seminar by a gentleman, which I know you know, called Bob Proctor. And at that seminar, I realized that I could move from being this victim and I could start creating my life in a different way. I could become a different version of who I was. And so over the years, I started applying what I learned. I became curious. I started, you know, buying books, reading books. Um, I just went deep into everything that I'd learned in that seminar and expanding on it. And I've continued to do that over the years. I applied Here's the thing, we, we, a lot of people I know will go to a seminar, they'll read a book, but they don't apply it. Mm-hmm. And I started applying what I'd learned. And I went from having no money to creating uh, an income for myself. I went from being thinking that I was nobody and worthless to having you know, amazing relationships. And I, I left, I moved and started in a different town. I did all these things that I would never have done purely because I was curious and someone had the foresight to introduce me to some personal development 
so there's it hasn't been by all means over the last 20 years it hasn't all been roses and i haven't been miraculously creating all these wonderful things life is you know full of ups and downs it's it's a law of life the law of rhythm and i've had plenty of those ups and downs and different things have happened over time i've found myself almost homeless and i've been able to get myself out of that so there's all these things that have happened in my life but what i've gone back to is using the principles that i learnt 20 years ago to get myself out of those ruts get myself out of those um yeah those those moments and those things that didn't work for me so yeah, my, that was my turning point 20 years ago and I've been lovingly, curiously creating my life ever since. And sometimes I've made mistakes and I've created stuff that hasn't worked and I've just reversed and used the same tools to create something different. Yeah. So that's sort of part of the story. Yeah, well, <laughs> There's a lot you. more, but that's part of it. <laughs> thank you for sharing. I, wow. Um, Within that, and I'm always fascinated because even off air, we were talking about, you know, moving from victim mindset to empowering mindset and, and almost we, are, we have our own compass and it, wisdom within us to, to, to move. I, I, I really feel that because I've done it myself, you know, and, and seen it enough as well. When you, because you spoke about principles as well, and, and even to this day, I have no doubt you'd go back to, like you said, some of the, the, the original principles that we learn. For me, anyway, it's always the, um, I don't know, the, the basics always work well. And it's if we do the basics well, the rest follows, and we tend to complicate things a lot. What would, were there any epiphany? So once you kind of went and you experienced Bob Proctor's work, who is a bloody legend, you know, and um, and you started to shift this whole mindset from from like you where you were to where you are now. Were there any epiphanies during the, those the, that 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 sacred time when we're going through the transition? Was there anything you were like, oh my god? And then you kept going back to daily um, to help that transition. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the biggest epiphanies was I get to create who I am. Hmm. I get to create how I turn up every day and I get to, I get to create my life to a sense. And that I do that create, we, we all do that creation by how we reacting or responding to situations. So the biggest epiphany was, you know, I, I am behind the steering wheel of my life. And if something's not going the way that I would like it to go, or I was hoping that it would go, I can turn that steering wheel. But there's also understanding the, the biggest lesson that I think I, I understood through, and this is through Bob's teachings, and, and I know that you're aware of this as well, is that, you know, our lives come, 95% of our life comes from this subconscious programming that we have. So if I was getting results and doing things and stuff wasn't working the way that I wanted it to work, I had to look at, well, okay, what am, what's going on below the surface and how can I change that? How can I get, I'm going to use the word energy, how can I get energetically attuned to who I want to become and start living from that place and acting from that place? Hmm. And that has been a game changer for me. Just that simple thing of remembering that. And as I've progressed and as I've gotten older, if something's happening, like if someone's pissing me off or someone's doing something that is sort of rattling my cage a little bit. I have this little, I have this little saying that I have in my head. I just say, not in my world. Cause I'm figuring if I can create my world, I can create this. So I will flip what I'm thinking about that person or whatever it is. And I go, not in my world. I, I don't want this in my world, whatever it is. And as I said earlier, you know, there was a point where I was borderline homeless. I'd left a, a, another not so good relationship. And at the time, luckily for me, I had, I had a house, the house that I live in now, and I was renting it out, but I'd left the relationship and I still had tenants in it. I had nowhere to live. So I was actually technically living in my parents' caravan in their front yard. So almost, if I didn't have parents, I would have been on the streets at that point. And I can remember sitting in their caravan thinking, this is not what I want for my life, right? How did I get here? And I know how I got there because I had been, had an underlying thing about one day I could end up with nothing. So here I was 
pretty much with nothing. And I was really worried that when I actually moved back into my house, I wouldn't be able to afford the payments on the mortgage because my renters had been paying that for me. So I remember sitting there in the, in the caravan, sitting there on the bed. There was not much room in these caravans and thinking, well, not in my world. What do I want? So I sat down and I just, I wrote this script of what I wanted, what I wanted my life to be like. I got really clear on that because we live our lives generally just based on what's happening. The environment triggers things for us and we keep living the same way all the time. And very rarely do we stop and go, what do I want to create for myself? Who do I want to become? And so I got really serious. Well, I obviously didn't want what I had right then. I had a bank balance that was very quickly declining and I wasn't living in a house. I was living in this little caravan. I had some stuff stored in mum and dad's garage and I thought, wow, what do I want? And so I wrote it out. It was about four pages long, but I also knew because I knew the tools, I'd had all the tools given to me years early and I'd done a lot of studying that I could change this. I could uh, switch this out. So every day I just started in a way meditating on this new version of me. I was wanted to become this new version, somebody who had income coming in, somebody who could do the things that they wanted in their life. Somebody was in a loving relationship, you know, someone had a successful business and I wrote those things out and I got really energetically entwined in that. So it was sitting there and recreating my life. And then if you fast forward approximately 14 months, everything I had written was my reality. Wow. Now, I, I've done a similar process myself like many years ago. And I have to ask you, though, because what I witnessed and what I witnessed within myself was that you've got to fully surrender and believe it and buy into it. Yeah. You know, warts and all, every, like every bit of your being. And that's not easy to do. <laughs> no. And it's, all, it's not easy. And I, I'm gonna, for those that can't see me, I'm just putting my hands in my, my head in my hands as if to say, it's not easy. <laughs> it, it is, it's work. And the thing that kept me going was faith in knowing that it worked because I had done it before in my life. Okay. So I had this underlying, and you're right, belief that if I keep doing this, I know it will work. And that kept me going. And I had to prove to myself that it would work. And at the same time, I had to allow, sit back and surrender and just allow that the things that were going to cross my path were going to cross my path as part of what I was creating. And some of those things I probably wouldn't like. So I had to really take on that mindset and that attitude of finding the good in everything. And I tell you mm. what, you know, there wasn't a lot of things that were good right then. So it's a real shift in who you are and a real shift. And it's a, it's a daily practice of changing your thinking, changing what you're getting emotionally involved in and also changing who, how, you step, how you're turning up in the world. And that's an energetic thing. Um, I can remember just having so much joy living in my parents' caravan. I found the joy in it. I found the good in it. And that kept my, I'm going to say, kept my vibe high in the times that were not the best times in my life. And I continue to do that. I continue to find the joy and I can, there are so many ways we can do that. If I'm having a crappy day, I know the buttons to push, the levers to pull that are going to raise my vibration to put me in a better vibe so that better things, you know, I see things from a different perspective. Now I'm not saying that this is uh, magic and I don't I just sit here and try and get a high vibe. I go out there and do work, but I do it from a place of seeing the good and noticing that, bad things happen in life and we have a choice of whether we can allow that to define who we are in a negative way, or we can allow that to define who we are in a more positive way. Mm. And so I choose to err on the positive and that can annoy some people. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Especially if we, if we're resistant to any kind of change. Yeah. You know, without a doubt. Um, 
I'm going to prod you one more question with all that because I, I love it. I, I, I'm loving it, Georgia. I really am. Because what do you think then is required? We're desperate for change. Mm -hmm. We're yearning. We even said at the beginning of the conversation about, you know, there's that disconnect and, and we're, we're, we're yearning for something more and we want to bring that into our lives. We, we, we want to buy in and love the idea of, of, you know, starting to, what does my life look like? Where, I always call it my North Star. You know, where, where am I going to point myself and start moving towards and continue to evolve, grow, and love life at the same time? But when we're in those states and when we're in those places, especially if it's dark and the whole world feels like it's against us, you know, that's, it's almost, once that pressure is fully on, I guess that's the, almost like the dark night of the soul. If we, you know, what are, that's where our actions truly define us. Mm. What do you think it takes to, to get from writing that out to go, and that's nice, but I'm just going to continue to act out the way I, I act, think, and feel and, and, and remain in my circumstances to then fully surrendering and believing that? Yeah, that's, there's a lot of questions in that question. <laughs> <laughs> so what I've, what I've come to understand is that, first of all, change is hard because we may, we've got this North Star and something we're pointing towards, but if we don't have the internal alignment with who we need to be for to reach that North Star, we self-sabotage. And we self-sabotage not from a negative point of view, it's actually we're protecting ourselves. So within us, our, our brains and our nervous system, they, like, they love homeostasis and homeostasis is the familiar whatever's familiar. So there's parts of us that is always seeking out the familiar. So if you're wanting a North Star, but for let's say eight months you've been depressed, that depression becomes familiar. So to step out of that into what you want, it's really, really difficult because you're conditioned to be a certain way now. You've done it so long that the brain becomes familiar with that and that becomes basically who you are mm. and you can change that. So the other part, another answer to that question is also to just start with one thing at a time and start to change. So if you're, if you're in a state where, you know, life's not the way I want it, we feel like it's just so heavy and we've got this big ball of negative energy and it's really, really difficult to, to move that. But if you can just start one piece at a time and just start making that positive ball slightly bigger every day until eventually that positive ball of energy becomes greater than the negative ball because and this is something we were talking off air is around dr joe dispenza's work and one of the things he says a lot is where you give your attention is where you give your energy mm. so if you're giving more energy each day and just filling up that positive ball the negative ball of energy starts to just disappear from lack of use so it becomes a process and there's some interesting work also being done out of harvard by robert keegan and he wrote this amazing book uh, called immunity to change it's a big you know it's a it's probably not something you just want to sit down and read over a coffee it's a little bit of an intellectual book but it talks about exactly the same thing and he talks about how they've studied this through harvard and through psychology is that there are parts of us within our system that will prevent us from change because it's trying to protect us because our immunity system protects us right so we have this immunity to change so therefore your your subconscious mind is programmed a certain way and it's going to want to stay that because it's very familiar. You have an analytical mind that wants to protect you as well. It's going to look for evidence that what you're about to do is safe. So if you're doing what you and I have done by writing out and getting really clear on who we want to become and meditating on that and getting emotionally involved with that on an ongoing basis, we're starting to form the, the blueprint and the evidence for it even before it's turned up. So when the analytical mind starts to look at that and go, hey, hang on a minute, I do have proof that I have a happy life because I've been programming myself to have that. And the change becomes a little bit easier, a little bit easier, but we've still got to go through that process. And so if we can set up our environment, if we can set up our internal environment and external environment 
to be aligned with where we want to go, it becomes easier over time. But it's still a process. We still need to put in some effort. You can absolutely speed that up, like with some of the work that you do, uh, Guy, meditation and getting that, really aligning our energy. We can find that we can have changes really fast as well. And we can change our behavior really quickly. And our behavior ends up leading to our results. So the aim here is to work on internally so that our actions change. And when our actions change, our environment changes. And there's a whole lot of other things that happen at the same time. But I don't know how much time we've got because it gets quite complex. <laughs> it does. It does. But I love your answers, honestly, Georgia, for sure. And, and you know, having known you for, you know, several years now and seeing the way you live your life and the way you conduct this work and, and having, you know, firsthand had to overcome yourself many times like we all do. And it was really interesting. I only put out a post the other day and we can touch on vulnerability if you like as well, because I think um, especially for, as, from me as a male perspective, it can be really hard for us men to, to do, but so therapeutic at the same time. But I did a post the other day, just, just owning the shit that's going on in my life right now. And I thought it's very easy to put one side of the, especially through social media and email, you can, you can just, you can, you know, t attune to whatever it is you want to present at the end of the day. Obviously we want to help people and present certain aspects, but I think we need to honor the other side that we're most of the time we are frightened to go there. Mm. But I I'd love you to touch on that because for me, the more, I've often just gone there and just accepted it and gone through it. It's like this, I don't know, this huge weight comes off every single time. And it always reminds me to, why am I so frightened of that? Like, why does that come up? You yeah, know? I, love, I love it. And I saw your post. I actually read okay. your post. And it was um, really enlightening because we see, and in the, the day and age we live in at the moment, we have social media and we see everybody's highlight reels of their life it's the highlights it's the it's the um it's the shorts for the movie like come and see my movie because mm -hmm. it's awesome right but actually there's a lot of stuff going on in the background and that vulnerability is really hard because deeply ingrained in us is this real this need for acceptance and this need for fitting in and if we're going to be vulnerable, we think at a, a really deeper level that no one's going to like us anymore. No one's going to trust us. You know, you're a person of influence. If I'm vulnerable, people might not follow me now. They may not do my programs. They may not listen to my podcast or whatever it is. But here's the funny thing. I find too, when I'm really vulnerable and sharing something that's of a personal nature of something that may have been a failure or something of my own that hadn't gone right, so many more people connect with that because within all of us, we've all made mistakes. We've all, you know, had rough times. We've all gone through things that don't work for us and we can connect with that more deeply than what we can with the people that are really successful. Because if you just put all your highlight reels out there, of mm -hmm. you've got all these amazing followers, you've got the a best podcast and all people go, well, I can't be like that. And so they disconnect. They're going to connect more with you when you're bringing your real, true human self to the forefront. Yeah. And then I think that's just a great practice to have amongst the people that we have in our lives mm. as well. And, and I never realized as well, the company I kept was such a huge influence on, on my progress or not. You know, if I did want to become master my own self and and live in a in a more joyous, loving state, to be in the victim myself as well. And as I started to own my own truth more, which I guess ties it back to the what we started at the beginning, the more the people in my life that maybe don't support myself kind of drop away, which is fine. There's no judgment there, and then. Mm other people come in, you make space for other people in your life to then support your, yeah. the way you Absolutely. move forward. Absolutely. And you can do it consciously or unconsciously with the people that you surround yourself with. And um, I, I agree a hundred percent. And we've got this, there's this true self within us just yearning to come out. I really believe. And a lot mm. of us, we are so heavily conditioned with who we need to be. And we're trying to fit in with a social group that maybe doesn't serve our our deeper self 
And, you know, one of the things that sent me on this journey back when I, um, when I went to Bob Proctor's seminar was I had this, all of a sudden I had this real desire to find out about what we can do as humans. You know, we are, we have so much potential locked up within us. And if we can go inwards and find that we we really do need to be around people who get that journey we're going on and that can support us through that. So I, I know of uh, people in my, my close circles who have been going on journey of self-discovery and, you know, learning more about themselves. And one of my key things is to, you know, we, we have so much potential. The best thing you can learn about yourself is how your body works, how your brain works, how your mind works, because you've got this vehicle you're living in. You want to know, you know, how it works. So get curious about that. But I have people, friends who have gone down that, that path of understanding more about who they are. And yet they've got people close to them thinking, Oh, you've been brainwashed. Oh, you've joined a cult. You know, all these things start to bubble up and because it's something that's going to help someone progress, all of a sudden it gets labelled negatively. And that's a real shame. Totally. Because, yeah, because people are wanting to bring out the best versions of themselves and people out of fear start to tear them down. And that's when we're surrounding ourselves with the wrong type of people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I, I'm going to ask you a practical question for everyone listening to this. What, let's say, three, what three things, tips would you give someone that is maybe in that point of knowing there's a transition coming, things are going against them, where do I start, what could I bring into my day, what could I research, what could I look at, like what three tips would you give someone that has benefited you over the years to, to start yeah. with? Um, okay, the first tip was, would be really get a, a deeper understanding of what causes your results in your life? So that is understanding how your understand how your mind works, because that in the end, how you think, how you feel, and what the energetic vibration you're in is going to determine your results. Really deep dive, get curious on that. Don't take my word for it. Get curious, and you'll find that it is written everywhere. Any religious book, any scientific book, anywhere you'll find that it all points to this. So that's one of the things I'd suggest you do. Another one is is to find find your find your tribe, find people who are on a similar journey that you can relate to, people that can cheerlead you along the way. And that will also really help. So a group of people and I, someone reached out to me on LinkedIn goes, where do I find these people? And I go, well, where would they hang out? They'd probably hang out at a personal development. They'd probably hang out at a yoga center, anywhere where they're bettering themselves, they'd hang out. They'd probably find them hiking through nature, right? Mm. So, you know, where would they go? Go, go to those places. Um, and the third thing I'd say is really sit with yourself and in a space of, quietness and get really clear on what you want if you know if you really wanted something that is greater than what you are now and it might not be it might just be a simple life you know no judgment here but whatever it is that you're wanting get really clear on that because if you don't have something your north star that you're moving towards you then start getting pushed and pulled from every shiny object and anything that sort of piques your interest sometimes can take you off path unnecessarily so I think get clear on what it is you want, understand how your mind works and surround yourself with um, people that are going to cheerlead you along the way. Beautiful, beautiful. What um, sparked another question, what non-negotiables do you have in your life these days with everything that you've learned that kind of help guide you on a daily, weekly monthly yeah. yearly basis one of the one of the things is is what i'm doing going to serve me in the future is what i'm doing going to play a part in where i want to be how i see myself in the future so that's a really a guiding sort of rule for me is this going to be good for me is this going to build me up um and another guiding principle is absolutely curiosity just, I don't know everything. So be curious. I have some information here, but somebody might have something that's counter that's different to that. So have an, always have an open mind and be curious and know that I know nothing. Beautiful. 
and that's they're, they're my guiding principles yeah 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 simple no i love it so i i always ask everyone sets of sets of questions on the show georgia and um we might have touched on this through what you shared before but i'd be interested to hear your thoughts around it anyway um is that have you had a low point in your life that you later look upon as a blessing yeah, absolutely. What I just spoke about. I look back at that night, my husband came home and said, I think we should separate as the best thing that ever happened to me. Just didn't absolutely. feel like that at the time though. No, not at all. <laughs> absolutely not at all. Two years later it did, but at the time, absolutely not. But now I look back at that and see it is as the biggest blessing. Yeah, absolutely. It was a catapult, um, and a turning point for me to really start to get clear on who I was. And I didn't know who I was. And I'm not saying who I was from a label point of view, but deep inside who, who I was from a spiritual point of view. Why do you think we need a wake up call to wake up and we don't almost just, I often think about this. I know, I know, (laughs) but, but, but it's even worth a conversation while it's coming in because I often ponder upon it myself and I, and I see so many people thinking, why this, this would, if you just nudged over here slightly, this would just support the efforts and and allow you to, yeah, without, I don't know if I can, I really don't know if I can answer that because part of me thinks, why do we need this wake up call? Why do we need, you know, the wheels to fall off before we decide that, Hey, I better go and fix the car. Right. Um, I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. I can't answer that. It's a mystery to me because I really would, I, I was a believer of that, but I can't find evidence yet of people who have made significant change in their life that haven't had a wake up call. Show me someone. And then we can talk to them about what happened. But I don't know anyone who hasn't had something of some nature, a wake up call, create change in their life. And one of the things I've noticed through the work I've done and through the study I've done, that there are two ways we can change. We can consciously change through repetition. So, you know, maybe I want to create a new habit. I can change, right? Through repetition, I can reprogram myself to create a new habit or a new belief system. The other way is through an emotional impact. Something happens and it instantaneously rewires the brain and we take new action automatically, like instantaneously. I've had both happen. One is consciously me making the change because I've realized, hey, you know, I need to exercise more. So I consciously exercised more. But there's been times when I knew I wanted to exercise more or take up a new type of exercise and I didn't. And it took an emotional impact for me to start doing something different. Yeah. Can't answer that. There are two ways we can change. Consciously, we decide, or unconsciously, when something just whacks us in the face and it's just a big eye opener, a big aha. And it's different for everyone. Yeah. Some people will have, you know, their wall their world fall apart and they won't change. I know people in their forties had heart attacks, don't change their lifestyle. Yeah, totally. I, I find um, I still need wake up calls, but, but I try. <laughs> uh, I, I'm getting better at preempting things. I kind of like the when the warning light comes on, it, it kind of happens a bit sooner, yeah. you know? Yeah. And here's something just really interesting the wake mm. up call can be different for everyone. So a wake up call might be a health issue, it might be a wake up call watching a movie, you might mm. have a wake up call reading a magazine. You may have, it It could be something really terrible, but those wake-up calls don't always have to be something drastic. It might just be this big flash of the obvious. Yeah, yeah, good point. Absolutely. Um, What does your morning routine look like? (laughs) I love my morning routine because I've uh, self-authored this. So generally, my morning routine is uh, up, stretching, uh, grab the dogs, go for a walk. Before that, I've had a big glass of water. Sometimes I put a meditation in there, but I've actually, and I mentioned this beforehand, mm. I've, my meditation practice has fallen off a little bit. So I'll go for a long walk with the dogs, come back, do some yoga, um, make myself a healthy smoothie thing at around 10 a.m. ish and um, do a little bit of sometimes, well, most days, a little bit of learning in there as well. So I'll be reading while I'm having breakfast or studying something. Uh, so that's basically my morning routine, a bit of, bit of everything. 
Yeah, love it. Um, if you could have dinner with anyone tonight, uh, from any time frame, anywhere in the world, who do you think it would be and why? You, because we've got so much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's an easy answer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but why not? Like, seriously, we, we think that we've got to have dinner with all these famous people, but we've got these amazing human beings sharing the planet with us. And um, well, I could get you and I could have an amazing conversation over no, dinner. Totally, totally. Beautiful. So I'm not, if, if I could choose anyone, it would be you. Yeah, thank you. I feel honored. I, um, I got one other question that landed in there. It just feels right to ask you for whatever reason. But has there been a new habit for the positive that you brought in for the last 12 months? And if there has, what would it be? And why did you do it? <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, there has. There has been a new habit that I've consciously done. And um, for those watching, you're going to see this. I don't know if you've seen one of these before. I got one. one. Yeah, a red roller. So in February this year, I had an emotional impact. I saw a video of um, someone explaining what happens to our, um, happens between the muscles and the skin overnight, how it starts to tighten and so forth. And I thought, I don't want that happening. What can I do today that my future self will thank me for? So every morning I do rad rolling. And, and did that, just to give people an example uh, on audio, it's literally like t the size of two tennis balls, would you yeah, say? Yeah, two Maybe tennis, two, it's like the together. size of two tennis balls um, rubbed together, uh, st stuck together, and you roll, I roll it on my, my feet, my legs, um, I roll, get on the floor, I do my spine with it, or my arms, the back of my neck. So I'm basically um, giving myself a massage every morning. Love it. You know, the irony was I did all that just before the podcast this morning. I took myself Same. down the gym. I took all my trigger point kit down and, and I rolled myself out and I'm always grateful for it. Yeah. So that um, would be the, the habit that I've installed this year. And it's, again, as I said earlier, what can I do today that my future self would thank me for? And um, it will thank me for that. Yeah. Awesome. And last question for you. Um, everything we've covered today, what, is there anything else you'd like our listeners to ponder on? I, I think just what I just said, what are you doing today that your future self will thank you for? What are the things, what are your daily habits? What are the things that you're doing? Are you connecting back to your true self or are you moving further away from it? Yeah, I think that's, yeah. that's it. Just just look at your daily routines. Look at Look at your environment. Look at what you're doing. Is it getting you to where you want to go? Are you going to look back when you're 103 and go, thank God I did that mm. back then? Yeah, and just make sure you act upon it. Yeah, take action, and that's the tricky bit. Yeah, totally. Thank you, Georgia. <laughs> For anyone, that, where can I send everyone um, if they want to learn more about your work, what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So if they want to jump on to bluechipminds.com, uh, it's blue chip mines as in what we think with not the mines that we go mining for oil or gold in um, or even just hook me hook up with Georgia Alice on Facebook Instagram is blue chip mines and LinkedIn as well so they can find me there or jump on board not that I want to take them away from your podcast but I have a podcast Alice in Wonderland as well if they'd like to have a listen to that 100% yeah I'll, I'll link to them all on the on the show notes just below this as well so people can go and check it out and um, yeah, Georgia, thank you so much for coming on today. Um, I always love our conversations, love everything you do with this work. And you've certainly been an inspiration to me too. And um, yeah, just want you to know, I deeply appreciate everything you do. Thank you. Likewise, I appreciate everything you do. And it's been an absolute ball talking to you. And I'm looking forward to dinner tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Georgia.